Welcome to Lusaka Avocado Multipurpose Cooperative Training Session. Apologies for having postponed this presentation from last week. We had a few technical issues, but without further ado, I will hand you over to our presenter, Mr. Chivesa. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Madam Kalinda. Good evening, fellow uh, farmers. Uh, today, we are looking at the subject, why compost are not synthetic fertilizers in relation to profitability of an agro enterprise. Next screen. Our learning objectives, to understand that we are stewards of the soil, meaning we are managers, we need to look after the, the soil, to appreciate the benefits of compost in an agro enterprise. And lastly, to appreciate that creation is eagerly waiting for the sons and daughters of God to be revealed, meaning those who are in conservation farming. Next slide. stewardship of the soil. Soil is defined as the naturally occurring and consolidated mineral or organic material at the surface of the earth that is capable of supporting life. Soil must support life. If it doesn't, people are forced to migrate from one region to another. We even have examples here in Zambia where some tribes have moved from their original uh, regions or land to other places in search of soil, which is able uh, to support what they are growing, the animals they are keeping, and also other life. Next slide. Some interesting facts about soil. So influences many areas of our lives, is an integral part of our ecosystem. The composition of the soil in the area has a direct effect on the plant and animal life there. A fully functional soil holds about 3,750 tons of water per hectare, thus reducing the risk of floods. So is a non-renewable natural resource. This should make us think how much we value this resource. Damage to the soil can disturb nature's balance and prove a threat to life. And uh, many of the antibiotics that stand as remedies for infections we are obtained from microorganisms in the soil. So this shows how important uh, so is, and we need to take care of it. The next slide. A few quotations about the soil. The first one is, for all things come from the soil or earth, and all things end up by becoming earth. The next one is, essentially, all life depends upon the soil, there can be no life without soil and no soil without life. They've evolved together. The other quotation is, there are no poor souls, only the poor thoughts. The last one is, when the land does well for its owner and the owner does well by his land, when both end up better by reason of their relationship, then we have conservation. Next slide. How does God see soil? For us to appreciate how God views the soil, we must turn to scripture or the Bible. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 9, God made the dry ground to appear, and he was happy about it. Because when he saw the land, he said, it is good. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, 
plants and vegetation were created from the soil. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 24, all animal life were made from the soil. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, man was created from the soil. And lastly, Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, God cares about the land or soil. Hence, he instructed man to work it and take care of it. Next slide. What is our responsibility? In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, we are told, now it is required that those who have been given trust must prove faithful. Thus, God assigned man to be stewards of the land, that is, to keep the soil alive. The stewardship concept involves personal and social responsibility by including, meaning including a duty to learn about and improve natural resources as we use them wisely, leaving a rich legacy for future generations. Next slide. What keeps the soil alive? So it's either the soil is alive or the soil is dead. So now I want to see uh, what, what will make the soil, our soils alive at our farms. Soil can be kept alive by humus, soil life or soil food web and earthworms. And the first one will look at humus. Uh, humus is the organic matter, e.g. compost in the soil that has been biologically and completely decomposed into a living storehouse of life and nutrients and is stable. An example of humus is what we call worm castings or worm manure. Now this humus has three to four times more holding capacity per volume of both nutrients and water than clay soil particles. 100% of humus nutrients and water are exchanged to the plant at all times. Humus has the holding power to retain casual nutrients against leaching. Meaning, uh, as we do the irrigation, the nutrients will not go beyond the root zone at a quicker rate because of humus, the humus who hold the nutrients. The next slide. Uh, benefits of good humus, we are still on humus. Humus and humic acid compounds aid in encapsulating or enclosing heavy metal nutrients that can create toxicity problems in the soil. For example, when Russia had the Nacria plant disaster in the 1980s, they used worm castings, worm manure, to cover the radioactive materials. So that's one of the benefits of humus. Then uh, essential micronutrients are better transferred in soil solution with high humus levels. Soil life is stimulated by improved oxygen and food supply. So in the presence of humus, uh, the life which is in the soil will, uh, will thrive and do better and do their work as they support other life systems. The next slide. Uh, the second component which will make our soil alive is soil life or soil food web. This is part of the soil that is mainly unseen by man's eyes, but soil life is responsible for health, fatal, and easily manageable soil. Soil life consists of the following. We have the bacteria, fungi, algae, protozoa, the nematodes, earthworms, and insects, just to mention a few. Next slide. How does soil work and the food web? How soil works? The soil works as a dynamic plant growing system. 
Soil, along with the atmosphere, water, and sunshine, provides all the needed elements and conditions for optimal crop or plant growth. Plants need at least 16 elements to carry out life processes to grow and reproduce. Uh, the 16 elements are oxygen, nitrogen, silicon, aluminum, iron, calcium, magnesium, phosphate, potash, sulfur, manganese, zinc, copper, molybdenum, boron, and chlorine. These elements must be present in the soil for whatever we are growing, either field crops or fruit trees, for them uh, to grow and reproduce, especially uh, fruit trees. The next slide. So food web, some details. The soil food web is a community of organisms living all or part of their lives in the soil. An incredible diversity of, of organisms make up the soil food web. These organisms range in size from the tiniest one single-celled bacteria, algae, fungi, protozoa, to more complex nematodes, microarthropods, to the visible earthworms, insects, small vertebrates, and plants. All these organisms eat, grow, and move through the soil. They make it possible to have uh, clean water, clean air, health plants, and moderated water flow. Next slide. Also, food webs are fueled by primary producers, the plants, lichens, moss, photosynthetic bacteria and algae that use the sun's energy to fix carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Most other soil organisms get energy and carbon by consuming the organic compounds found in the plants, other organisms, and waste byproducts. As organisms decompose complex materials or consume other organisms, nutrients are converted from one form to another and made available to plants and other soil organisms. All plants, grass, trees, shrubs, agriculture crops, depend on the food web for their nutrition. No wonder the soil is referred to as the stomach of the plant. Next slide. Uh, you've jumped to one slide, I think. Okay. The third one is what makes the soil alive is earthworms. Earthworm castings or manure are much like humus, as earlier mentioned. The worm castings are concentrated with nutrients and they are hold out Holding capacity is much higher than clay soil particles. Castings increase calcium three times, nitrogen five times, phosphorus seven times, and potassium 11 times. So the earthworms, uh, for example, will consume the, they will feed on the compost. So they will digest the compost further for, uh, for the nutrients to, to increase. Uh, in volume or numbers and, and they being available for the plants. So the earthworms are a farmer's and paid plowman and is a fertilizer dealer too. Isn't it wonderful what God does for us free of charge? Up to 700 pounds or 317 kg of worm castings per acre, which is 100 by 40 meters, can be produce, produced each active day. So if, if in our soils, at our farms, we have uh, earthworms, 
these FOMs will be feeding on uh, materials which have decomposed. So then we are going to have uh, worm castings or worm manure, the way we have uh, manure from goats, sheep, uh, cattle, pigs. So even worms, as they feed, the waste is called worm castings or worm manure. Next slide. What is wrong with um, Madam Kalinda? Have, have you not skipped the the soil food web? There is a diagram somewhere. Yeah. Before we get to uh, the fertilizers and the like, I want to say something on the on the diagram which we have there, which is called the soil food web. So if you see in that picture, in the top left corner, we have uh, the sun, then uh, we have the first trop uh, trophic level there, we are seeing the plants, uh, the leaves, the roots, the organic matter, the next, we have the nematodes, the fungi, the bacteria. So the nematodes will be feeding up, uh, on the roots, the fungi as well, the bacteria, the fungi will also feed on the dead matter. Then we have the next level there, the arthropods, again, the nematodes and the protozoa also feeding on the other animals. So we have the chain. So now I just want to say, uh, something on the fungi. On the fungi there, we have one fungi which is called uh, mycorrhiza fungi. Now this mycorrhiza fungi is very important. Uh, currently, even on the market, there are powders which are, are sold as the mycorrhiza fungi. Now, before we get to what we are buying on the market, but basically in the soils, this fungi must be present. Now, the benefits of this fungi is that uh, it improves the nutrient and water uptake of the plants. Then the other thing is the same fungi also releases enzymes that free nutrients from soil for plant use. The other benefit of the Mycorrhiza fungi is that it, incre it increases the root mass. It increases the surface area of the roots. So this fungi will attach itself to the roots. So it will be more or less like additional roots. So it increases the surface area. Hence, the first advantage of improving nutrient and water uptake. So this uh, soil food web is very important. In the absence of uh, this food web, then that particular soil is dead, meaning it will be very difficult for whatever we are going to, uh, to plant, to grow and produce to the level which uh, will be satisfied and which will give us a good return at the end of the day. And we can move now to the other slide on the Synthetic fertilizers. Yeah, this one. So what is wrong with the NP NPK, synthetic fertilizer approach to farming? Here we are talking about uh, uh, the decompound and the other uh, fertilizers from the factories. Does it make sense to use high levels of highly concentrated water soluble nutrients? The NPK chemical approach to farming is both incomplete and wasteful. What does it mean? For example, nitrogen. Excess nitrogen from synthetic fertilizers is a waste. And it pollutes the environment and suppresses long-term stable biological processes in the soil. So when we uh, buy the, the decompound, 
G compounders, those three elements, the, uh, the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So the plants will not take up all the nitrogen from our fertilizers because it's in excess. So what remains in the soil will make the soil acidic. And the, an acidic environment, some of the, the bacteria and the fungi will not survive in that particular environment. When we talk of phosphorus, only a small amount is available to the growing plant and the rest contributes to the hardening of the soil. The other element is the potassium. The source is potassium chloride, a strong salt containing 47% chlorine. Researchers found that chlorine takes two years to reach to leach below 61 centimeters in a typical soil. Meaning, uh, for, for that excess chlorine to go below 61 centimeters and usually uh, below the root zone, it will take that uh, period of time, which is two years. So while it is in the upper soil, Higher levels of chloride can kill beneficial soil life and injure roots. This is due to increased acidity in the soil. That's the more reason why there's, there's so much emphasis, especially uh, for, for maize farmers, that they need to apply lime uh, before they plant. Because uh, acidity, locks the nutrients. Now, when you apply lime, you neutralize the soils so that the nutrients are made available. Next slide. In addition, synthetic NPK fertilizers have few or, or no secondary and trace elements. Yet, all 16 elements are necessary for plant growth, not just the big three, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Continued use of NPK alone can result in trace elements deficiencies. So normally what happens when we are using um, these synthetic fertilizers, our uh, extension, of agriculture extension officers, as well as uh, agro dealers and all experts. They will tell us also to buy foliar fertilizers like soluble and the other fertilizers on the market, which have trace elements. So meaning when you buy your D compound, it's not enough. So it means you must also buy another fertilizer. So meaning you need more money now for you to do your farming. The continued use of synthetic fertilizers and other conventional farming practices violates God's natural laws of his soil, resulting in problems like erosion, disease, insects, and weeds. The other challenge with synthetic fertilizers is that prices of these fertilizers are going up all the time, thereby increasing the cost of production. For example, currently a bag of fertilizer decompound here in Impongwe is going at uh, between 850 kwacha to 1000 kwacha. And the prices have kept going up. The other challenge with synthetic fertilizer is that they require specialized skills to apply, which many farmers lack. And unfortunately, farming is the only career where uh, we just go in without uh, very few people have gone to school to do farming. For example, if you want to become a teacher, you go to uh, the university or Chalimbana College so that you are trained to be a teacher. If you want to be a nurse, you go to a nursing school. Unfortunately, farming is the only profession where we, we just go in 
based on uh, basic knowledge, maybe what our parents used to do, we've learned from there, then also pick it up from there. So due to lack of knowledge, we've not applied these synthetic fertilizers correctly. No wonder we still have challenges for small scale farmers to graduate from being small to emergent and commercial farmers. And basically it's the lack of specialized skills. Next slide. The other challenge of synthetic fertilizers is that availability is not guaranteed due to many factors, e.g. wars, like the war uh, between Russia and Ukraine, we all know, it has also contributed to the uh, prices going up and even availability not guaranteed. The other challenge also is lockdowns due to epidemics like COVID-19 which disrupt supply chains. For example, <clears throat> Zambia is a net importer of these synthetic fertilizers. So the moment our neighbors closes the borders, then we're not, we're, we are not going to have the fertilizer supplies. The other challenge is pure, pure forage by workers because they can easily sell it. The Another challenge is that synthetic fertilizers do not improve on the soil structure. Then the other challenge is that constantly declining soil health, that is fertility, leads to increasing input volume requirements and costs. For example, when we were growing up, uh, we were using uh, uh, a bottle top, uh, from a Coca-Cola bottle or Mossy bottle to apply the decompound, which is not the case. Nowadays, farmers don't even use uh, those measurements because uh, the fertility of the soils keep declining and declining. As a result, they are using more and more of these fertilizers. The other challenge is that consumers are becoming more health conscious and want organically grown crops. Thus, over time, fertilizer grown crops will lose market. Next slide. And this, the following slides, I will do a demonstration, I will explain a demonstration which you can. Uh, which you can do at the farm just just to confirm uh, this part of the presentation so this demonstration is on the dangers of synthetic fertilizer to soil life so what you need is one decompound 20 grams then the second material is a handful moist compost then uh, two live worms you get the worms, two of them. Then 500 mils, empty mineral water bottle, you need two. A knife. Next slide. A method one, you cut uh, uh, the empty mineral bottles into two at the center meaning the top part, um, you put it aside, you remain with the, the bottom part is what we are going to use. Then secondly, you place the decompound fertilizer in one cut bottle and the compost in the second one. Then thirdly, put one worm in the container with decompound and the second worm in the container with compost. Wait for 20 minutes and check the condition of the worms. Next slide. Result. The worm in the container with decompound will die. The worm in the container with compost will still be alive. What are the lessons? If a worm can die as a result of decompound, 
What about the bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and nematodes, ETC? They too will die as a result of the use of synthetic fertilizers. Continued use of synthetic fertilizers for a longer period, especially in fruit trees, which are generational, will kill the soil. So what is meant by killing the soil is that uh, the soil life, which uh, helps to make the nutrients available, will be killed. Next slide. Benefits of compost. The beauty with compost is that uh, a farmer has either 80% or 100% of the materials at the farm. Uh, when making compost, you need 40% of dry leaves and grass, 40% of green leaves and grass, and 20% of manure. So there are farmers who are uh, not, not keeping animals like pigs, sheep, goats, chickens, or cattle. So in this case, they will be required uh, to buy from neighbors or friends. That is what is meant by 80%. This is a situation where, as a farmer, you don't have the source of nitrogen, which is the manure produced at your own farm. Or 100%, this is a situation where you are keeping either goats, sheep, or chicken, meaning you have 100% of the materials. So the farmer can start making compost this time, or even make all year round if he has conserved materials. So with compost, there is no need to depend on South Africa, on Zimbabwe, on the Congo. We have the materials at our farms. And most cases, these materials just go to waste. The farmer does not need to depend on other companies to supply synthetic fertilizers. So whether nitrogen chemicals of Zambia is still in production or not, as the farmer, you are going to have your fruit trees growing, your vegetables and your maize, because you are going to make your own compost. The other benefit, it's cheap. And basically the only expense is the exercise, the energy. The other advantage is that compost is readily available as and when you need it. It is also environmentally friendly. Next slide. We continue with the benefits. Compost has the, all the essential nutrients needed by plants. That is the 16 elements. Compost release nutrients slowly. Therefore, they stay long in the soil. Compost holds water six times its weight. Compost promotes soil microbial activities and populations, unlike synthetic fertilizers. Synthetic fertilizers will kill, meaning they will reduce the microbial activities and populations. Compost is the other way around, it will increase. Compost does not make, make the soil acidic. Compost improves the soil structure. Next slide. Benefits continues. You can make compost tea, which can be used as a fungicide. You can also package and sell compost as another product line. The Bible tells about tells us to diversify. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter eleven, Solomon talks about the eight streams of income. So compost can be another stream of income in addition to selling avocados, maize, and other products. For example, a 10 kg bag of compost, the last time I checked, 
at uh, Sweeney Enterprises in Kitwe. It was going at uh, eight kwacha per 10 kg. You can also start a wemari uh, from compost and sell wem castings or wem manure. Uh, the last time in the same shop, Sweeney, they were selling one kg of wem manure at 70 kwacha. Compost was going at 80 kwacha per 10 kg. The, the manure from worms was going at 70 kwacha per kg. You can also harvest worms and feed supplement and feeding village chickens. You can feed your fish, you can also uh, supplement uh, feed for pigs. You can also, from compost, you can also make potting mix and use it uh, in a nursery as potting soil and sell excess. Uh, when you go in a game shop, they sell potting mix. And this is imported from South Africa. Uh, 10 kg goes at eight kwacha. So from compost, you can make potting mix, you add the other uh, materials to make potting mix, which is used in uh, nursery and those who are uh, in flower business and landscaping. Compost can be used as mulch. Then uh, the knowledge from compost, you can use it to train pupils who are doing agriculture science and small scale farmers for free as your corporate social responsibility. Next slide. We'll look at an example in mass growing. We'll do some comparisons in uh, profitability. The picture on the left, the farmer with a red cap is Mr. Chilombo of Chamakubi along so always it in God Lord. The picture on the left, uh, as a family, they made compost, which they used as basal dressing. Then they used urea as top dressing. That's the picture on the left. The picture on the right, they used the decompound as basal dressing and urea as top dressing. Now, if you look, um, the color of the leaves. The one on the left is deep green. The one on the right is uh, light green. The reason is that uh, compost, as area mentioned, as makes available 16 elements to a plant. Hence, what we are seeing in the picture there in terms of color. Next slide. So that's the sample of the maize, which was produced from the two fields, uh, grown by the same farmer under the same conditions. On the left is maize grown with compost and urea. On the right is maize grown with decompound and urea. And from the picture, the compost cob is twice as large as the one produced from the compound. So just looking at the picture, you are able to see the difference. You are able to see the benefits, the advantages of compost over the compound. Next slide. Farming is a business. And the purpose of every business is to make a profit. However, due to the ever increasing cost of inputs, a lot of farmers are finding it difficult to make a profit and increase yields. The good news to every farmer or gardener all is not lost because there's an alternative to reduce the cost of production and increase yields. 
by using what we have at our farms and make compost. Next slide. For example, Mr. and Mrs. Nyerenda of Chamakubi, along Sorwezi Chingora Road, started making and using compost in 2018. Their cost of inputs has gone down and their yields have gone up. For example, in the year 2019-2020 farming season, the following were their results. Next slide. So we have maize grown with compost. So what they did for the purposes of comparisons, because it was their first year uh, using compost, they didn't abandon um, the decompound. So they wanted to, to, to make comparisons to see the difference. So they cultivated two lemurs. Uh, that is 50 by 100 using compost as basal dressing, then urea as top dressing. So they harvested 56 bags, each weighing 60 kg. So when we multiply uh, 56 by 60, it's giving us 3,360 kgs. In that year, the selling price was two kwacha 20 ngwe per kg. So the uh, total sales value was 7,392. The following were the expenses. Decompound fertilizer, new, because they didn't use D, they used compost. Then uh, they used three bags of urea, each costing 400, which uh, they spent 1,200. 10 kg seed at 300, empty grain bags at four quarter per bag. So they needed 56 bags, which is 224. Transport to buy the bags, 100 quarter. They spent labor, 700 quarter. Total expenses on this particular area, which they cultivated with compost was 2,524. We subtract to find the profitability of the project. They made a profit of 4,868. Next slide. Mess grown with fertilizer. Another two lemurs, 50 by 100, they harvested 15 bags, each weighing 56 kg. If we multiply the two, we get 840 kgs. Selling price, two quarter 20 ngwe per kg, total sales value, 1,848. Expenses, they used the uh, Two bags of decompound at 400 quarter each, which is 800 in total. Three bags of urea at 400 quarter per bag, 1,200 in total. 10 kg mess seed, 300 quarter. 15 bags at four quarter per bag, 60 quarter. Transport 100 quarter, labor 700. Total expenses, 3,160. Here, they made a loss of 1,312 quarter. Next slide. Why the difference in yields and profitability? As earlier mentioned, the compound has only three elements, the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. While this compost enables plants to access 16 elements, oxygen, nitrogen, silicon, and many others as earlier mentioned. Next slide. In conclusion, in the book of Isaiah chapter one verse 19, it reads, 
If you are willing and obedient, you eat the best from the land. Now, the subject of obedience is in deference to the laws of the creator. Now, when God created the universe, he put in two laws, the moral law and the physical law. Now, the physical law, one of them is found in the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 38, which reads, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For if the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So in the example I've just uh, given on mess growing in the two fields, the principle here or the law in the book of Luke, it's very clear. When you put in a lot, even the harvest will be much higher than when you put in little. When you use D, you are only putting in three elements. When you're using compost, you are putting in 16 elements. So from the above presentation, it's very clear that uh, if we go the compost way, we go the natural way, we are going to reap a lot of benefits in profitability, as well as our health, then we we'll even leave the farms, our lands for our future generations. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Teresa. That was very, very interesting. I have a couple of questions um, from Vesa, but before I go to Vesa, I wanted to ask if um, the other members that are on Zoom had any questions, you can unmute yourselves to ask a question. So I'll just give them a few seconds to see if anybody's got any questions. Yes, Dr. Chimoka, go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you for such a wonderful presentation. I have two questions. The first one, uh, is it possible or do you know if some of these uh, worms can be too much in a plant? Like they are really too much and they can maybe destroy the plant or it doesn't matter how many worms are, are there? That, that's, that's one question. The, the next question, I hope that was clear. Yes, it yes. was, Dr. Chimoka, okay. go ahead. The, the next Brilliant. question is uh, probably I missed something, but the question, is there a possibility that the compost, the manure can be wrongly mixed and then destroy the plant? Uh, uh, as compared to, for example, urea, where they will say, take a cup or a spoon and put. Uh, how is the comparison with uh, the compost manure, just to make sure uh, the yield uh, is as good as uh, the pictures that we show, uh, that were demonstrated? Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Those are very good questions. Yes, uh, Mr. Chivesa. Uh, thank you for those uh, two questions. There is, uh, there is no harm with the number of worms. If anything, the more you have, the better. Uh, when, uh, for example, if uh, you've applied compost in the, in the field, uh, you see the worm castings on top. There are those, how can I describe them? The granulars. This so looking granular. Now, the, 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 the worms are very intelligent uh, uh, creatures. And like human beings, you find human beings, some of our friends at their farms, they don't even have toilets. But worms will deposit their castings, their manure on top of course, which is of benefit to the plants. Now, 
as they come on top to deposit, to excrete, they will make holes. So those holes will be of benefit to a farmer because through the same holes, air will go in for the benefit of other soil life. So the, the more worms you have, the better in the field. And the, because you are going, to, because you have more worms, you are going to have those pores. And when rain comes, you are going to the the soil is going to hold more water. You will have very little run off because the soil will sink because the worms have created the passages. The way we do in uh, these uh, gardens, you, you know, let's aerate, you get the garden folk, you start digging, why? We want oxygen to get in. Now, we don't need to do that when we use compost because the worms will do the, that part for us. Uh, can we have a wrong mix as we make the compost? Well, uh, what we normally teach to use in our compost is grass from the farms, grass and leaves, and manure. So these three components, they, they don't have toxicity. That's the same reason why we don't recommend the use of paper and plastics when we are making compost. It should just be leaves. So as at now, we've not experienced any wrong mix in terms of making our compost because we are using uh, materials which grow at our farms, which have no toxicity. So the probability of having a wrong mix in our compost is very slim. Dr. Chimwaga, was that answered your question or would, did you have a follow-up? Uh, thank you. The first question was answered well. The second question, of course, is an assurance that is very slim. Uh, probably it's just the right procedures that need to be followed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. Um, Mr. Mushibwe, I see you've got a question. Please go ahead. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I wanted to find out from uh, uh, Mr. Chibesa. There are some trainers who recommend that uh, uh, you dig a trench, then make uh, your compost. Then others uh, recommend uh, a surface uh, uh, compost heap. Is there advantages of these uh, different uh, methods? Yes. The, the first one is the time it's going to take. If you dig a trench, it's going to take longer for the materials to decompose and the compost to be ready. On average, not less than six months. Because once you fill up that trench, you are going to cover it with soil. So this compost is, the other term, we will call it anaerobic, without air. So it's going to take long for the materials to decompose. The surface one has an advantage. The surface one is called uh, aerobic or thermal. The surface one heats up. Because it heats up, it's quicker to decompose and it will take two months to be ready. Because the surface one, you'll be turning it. Every week you turn it, every week you turn it. So by the time it's uh, two months or eight weeks, the compost will be ready. Has that been answered? Yes, it has been uh, answered. Probably, I don't know, because uh, I, I joined in uh, uh, much, much later because. Uh, then, okay, the other, the other advantage with, uh, the YouTube the one is not uh, working. Hello? Yes, I'm getting you. Yes. 
the 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 other the other advantage with the surface one is that uh, you are you are going to the materials in 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 terms of uh, in terms of of making you know what you are going to to apply because there are layers you you start with the the dry the green then you put the manure the dry green manure dry green manure until you reach the the height you want to now for the one which is we will do the trench it is uh usually there is um you you just you just throw in the materials there is um I would say there is very little management with with the one where you you dig the trench, but the one which is the surface, there, there is a way the, the 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 materials are piled up. Thank you very yes. much. Yes, Mr. Mushewa. Does that answer your question? Follow up to a question which I wanted to ask. Yes, go ahead, sir. When it comes to turning of uh, the materials in the uh, in the surface uh, heap, do you follow the layers which you laid in the in the initial stage? No. When when now turning, the materials will start mixing. So we'll, we'll start with the materials which are on top. And usually, uh, since it's uh, our standard height, which we recommend is 1.5 meters, we, you might even need climb on top of it. Then you start moving the materials which are on top. You are throwing them in the in the next uh, in the next box which you have which you have made. Then you also get the materials which are in the sides because by the seventh day. The materials which are on top and which are in the sides would have dried up because of the sun and the, the air or the wind. Then the materials which are in the middle will still be moist. Then those, you push them on the sides in the next box. So when, when turning, you now start mixing the materials. You don't go layer by layer. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Okay. Mr. Mushibwe, I see you've, you've muted yourself. So I'll go on to the next person who's asking the question. Um, I don't know if you had any questions, Mr. Daka, or anybody else who's on the on Zoom before I go to WhatsApp. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Daka. Uh, no, I'm good. Um, okay. I'll just follow along. Thank you. Thank you. So um, for the questions that I have on the chat so far, uh, Vesa is asking, her first question is, um, good evening, Mr. Chivesa. Can deep soil be brought back to life by organic or non-synthetic means? Uh, it's, it's, is it the dead soil? Yes, she's put dead soil. Can it be brought back to life? Yes, uh, dead soil can be brought back to life by use of uh, compost. You compost, you mulch. Of course, it will it will it will take time, but uh, it can be done. Things can be reversed. There is a there is a place in Indola called uh, uh, Don't Trust. It's in Mushiri Kansengu. When they settled there, these are the missionaries from German, the land was bare. So they started the same conservation farming. They started planting trees, composting. Com of course, the, 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 the local Zambians doubted what they were doing. As we speak today, when you go there, it's uh, an oasis. So yes, 
a dead soul can be brought back to life with the use of compost and mulching. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Monero, you've still got your hand up. Please go ahead if you've got a question. Yes. Uh, th thank you very much uh, for the comprehensive uh, presentation. Uh, I wanted to find out um, uh, some people have talked about covering, uh, say, the compost with the plastic. Uh, does it help or because some say that you lose some of the nutrients to the air? Is it recommended? Oh, Mr. Teresa, over to you. Yeah, well, the, the, there are so many methods of, uh, of, of, of making compost and uh, of course, there are so many schools of thoughts, but uh, uh, the one, because when you, when you cover, it means it's, uh, it's anaerobic, meaning there will be very little air getting in. But again, it also depends on the materials which we are using, because uh, with such a method, normally, we use a kitchen waste, which is uh, quick to decompose because of uh, the, the, some of the materials have passed through heat and the like. But uh, uh, the one which we share with uh, our fellow farmers is uh, we, we don't cover and it's called aerobic. We want to take advantage of the oxygen so that it heats up then we use materials which are readily available, which is the grass, the leaves, and the manure. So as these materials are exposed to uh, air, as well as moisture, because we, 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 we add water, so they heat up. And at the end of the day, we are going to have enough compost for our field, uh, like when you use uh, kitchen waste, and normally you will not have uh, tons and tons of uh, kitchen waste. But in short, there are so many schools of thought, so many ideas, so many ways, and much more is being discovered. But the best is uh, you look at what you have, uh, what can you use, what is convenient. Of course, the, the one we, we, we talk about, it needs training, meaning there must be someone present uh, at the farm or you must be available to do the training because if you don't train, it will cool down, then it will take long for it to be ready. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sam. Uh, the next question that we have on the group from Vesa is, do you believe that fertilizer producers, producers don't share this information to keep us captive? <laughs> she says, it's quite scary, that th which I never knew in terms of impact of NPK fertilizers. Um, they know. Now, you <laughs> see... There is, uh, they are in business. They will, they will not tell us. And in most cases, they don't even use it in their farms. But I'm sure you will agree with me. For example, uh, we've heard that the Chinese will keep broilers and sell but they don't eat them, they eat village chicken, ducks and the other stuff. So even in this uh, situation, our friends are in business. They want profit. So 
they will they will, they, will, they will say they will not tell us the 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 side effects of them because they are in business. They are even, in, uh, for example, commercial farmers. They will grow the the cabbages, the other stuff with the synthetic. But the wives will be maintaining an organic garden where well, what they will be consuming, the synthetic is for selling. For lack of a better term, uh, uh, there is a verse in the Bible which was written by Solomon, which says, give wine to those who are perishing. So <laughs> in short, those who don't have knowledge, you can give them anything. <laughs> Thank you for but that. Sir. Laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> we've got a question from Chiluvi uh, Mafuenko. She says, is it a must to add green matter or dry matter to um, only with manure? Can it work? Yes, when, uh, <clears throat> when, we, when we make the compost, it's recommended that uh, we get the dry leaves and the dry green. Now, this is the fungi who feed on the dry materials. Then the green material, it's uh, the bacterias. The bacterias will feed on the green materials. Then the manure, the, the fungi also feed on the manure because it's dry, but the manure will provide the nitrogen. So we need these three mix for us to have uh, uh, the compost, which will be rich because the dry, the dry material will also provide the carbon, which is needed in the soil. As plants grow, they need uh, the carbon content. So we need the, the three, the, 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 the brown, the green, and the manure. But for the, man, for the manure, it's the nitrogen source. So if you don't have manure, uh, you can also use the remains from soya beans when you do the 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 is it the threshing you've harvested the soya beans you remove what remains the remains from the soya beans you can use that as the nitrogen source or if you have uh, uh, green uh, soya bean leaves and stalks you can use them as nitrogen source in a situation where you don't have source of uh, uh, manure of either chickens, cows, or goats. Thank you very much, sir. We have got um, uh, Taruza Katekas uh, asked me to send out your presentation. Just to let everybody know, I have sent out the presentation to both Telegram and WhatsApp. And then we have a question from um, Genevieve. She, oh, a, a comment, sorry. She says, um, thank you very much. This is great information. And then uh, Preska Sanga is asking, how thick should the layers of dry leaves, green leaves and manure be when making compost as is an aspect of water required? Or oh, sorry, also is an aspect of water required. I think this was in your first presentation, I believe. Yeah, it was, but uh, we can uh, still quickly uh, say yes, something. Uh, on average, uh, 20 to 25 centimeters for, for the brown or the dry. Normally, we use, we use dry or brown interchangeably. So dry... Uh, brown or dry materials, 20 centimeters. But make sure that if you are going to use the maize stover, they are cut. Even elephant grass, you need to cut them in uh, 
small pieces. Same applies with uh, green material, which is green leaves and green grass. Then for the manure, manure is basically spreading. It's, it's just the layer to cover the, uh, the materials. We'll, we'll, we'll start with brown, then we put green, then the next is manure. Now, the way we, we do apply margarine or butter or peanut butter on our slices of bread, just smearing. Yeah, that, 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 that's, uh, that's the right term. So for the manure, you will not go by the 20 centimeters thickness. You just do the smearing, basically just to cover the, 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 the green materials which are on top. And uh, the, best we, the best measure we use is just two wheelbarrows. If you have a wheelbarrow, uh, you, you, you fill it with the manure and you apply water. Then you go and do the smearing. Then you do a second wheelbarrow. That will be enough. Is water necessary? Yes. Water is life. Now, when you pick the dry grass, dry leaves, the green leaves, and including the manure, the fungi and the bacteria are present on the surfaces of those materials. But when they are in the open, Without water, it will, it will take long for those materials to decompose. But when we dip them in water, as, as we are making, we, you know, we dip them in water, water is life. Water creates an enabling environment for the fungi, the bacteria, to start feeding and the multiplication. So water is very, very important. Even as we, when making, you need water. When you can, you also need to be sprinkling water because some materials will dry, the ones on top and the ones on the sides. So that's the reason why we even recommended that the compost site should be near a water source. Thank you so much, Sam. Um, we have uh, another question, and this is from, uh, oh, you've done the Preska Sanga one about the water, and looks like that's all we have. Victor Kalala has said, excellent presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate everybody's comments, and I would like to ask if there's anybody on Zoom who's got a follow-up question. Okay, doesn't seem to have anybody. Mr. Chivesa, thank you so much again for such a wonderful presentation. We appreciate your time and your being able to give us this presentation. We'll look forward to having very green avocados and also selling compost and selling worms and using the worms to feed our fish. And then we're going to have a full cycle. At some point, I think I've asked you to put a presentation of all the things that are symbiotic on the farm that we could actually put together and sell. Thank you so much. Do you have any last comments, sir, before we close? Thank you uh, very much and you're welcome. Uh, my, my, my last words are from the book of Psalms, uh, first Psalms, as, uh, Psalms chapter one, verse one, to three, it says, blessed is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or sit in the seat of mockers or stand in the wall of sinners. His delight is on the law of the Lord and on this law he meditates day and night. So for us to succeed in our farming enterprise, in our avocado businesses, we need to read, we need to study, we need to do our 
to visit. We need to see what is happening because the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Now, the Lord there meant that knowledge is made up of three things, which is information, understanding, and application. Information is readily available when you go on Google everywhere. But usually we have a challenge on the understanding. Now, understanding, we we'll only get it if we apply, we do something, we try, we see how others are doing it, we attend the shows, any activity we hear about farming, we go there. Then lastly, we must apply it. Then we will not perish. Then our enterprises will be profitable. Uh, lastly, but not the least, uh, thank you very much as well for your time and uh, your words of encouragement. Until yes. next time, God thank bless you. Thank you, I look forward to it. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> I appreciate you joining us. The, the recording will be available. If you want to watch what you missed, if you just use the little red button and move it back, you'll be able to rewind the whole session and still send us comments on WhatsApp. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending today. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you so much.